Hi, uh, welcome to the Daria Reactions. I'm Fred. If you're new to the channel, I'm glad that you found us. If you are a returning viewer, uh, I'm glad that you've come back. Uh, we have reached the end of Daria's first season. And uh, I have enjoyed myself going, uh, doing these uh, long-form reaction, rewatch, commentary, and discussion uh, videos over the past several weeks. And, um, and, and looking back at each individual episode, um, it certainly was a time capsule and, a, and a, almost, almost a perfect um, representation. I take not quite perfect, but a like uh, what was the overall perception of what uh, high school was like um, in the uh, latter half of the 1990s. Now, with that in mind, the 13th episode of season one that we'll be covering today, titled The Misery Chick, is an episode that I personally can relate the most to. Um, uh, number one, I remember its plot line pretty thoroughly, um, or at least what my memory my memory is telling me. Uh, a former football, uh, former Lawndale High alumnus who was a football star returns to the school to bask in his glory. A goalpost is being named after him. Uh, he's a jerk to everyone. Um, he has an exchange of words with Daria, and he proceeds to run headfirst into the goalpost at, at his top speed, proving that that speed does not kill. Suddenly becoming stationary does. But in the aftermath of that, uh, every uh, everyone starts looking at Daria differently uh i believe jane starts avoiding her for a bit uh, a lot of folks start coming up to her asking her about death and stuff because she is quote perceived to be at the misery chick and and it's that and it's that uh being labeled as something that you're not just based on miscon uh, uh on the is something that i can very much relate to because in high school I was definitely a loner and um, I I don't like talking about this but April 1999 in the aftermath of the uh, Columbine incident that, that occurred I was one of those uh, many students that across the country that was not only uh, persecuted uh, by their fellow classmates, but also by school administrators. I, uh, because I have, uh, I can be very blunt. I do have a unique way of speaking and voicing my opinions, especially when I get worked up. And, and I, I was definitely a loner. I, I didn't, I was not very keen on socializing with anyone I, I was essentially forced to be on the uh on the high school bowling team and then and and then in my junior years i was basically forced to like expand everything that i was uh that i was doing uh just to like just like to prove that i'm not and it and it complete it being labeled as something that you're not because you don't fit the norms of what society tells you, especially as a young person, can have very detrimental effects. And I don't, uh, and I know I've made a lot of choices in my life because of that. That has uh, certainly made things harder on myself. Because when you try to be something that you're not, it, it, to try it, to be, it's pretty much being the square peg trying to fit into a round hole. And so, so yeah, I can relate to this episode a lot. Not, not just on the on the perceived subject matter, but just based on being labeled because of who you are because some uh, in the aftermath of, of something uh tragic happening so yeah again i again 
if you ever wonder why I, when I say I don't look fondly back on my high school years, it's because of that. And I can look at this episode of Daria. It says like, uh, yeah, I, it, it, it resonates strongly with me even to this day here in 2024. Like we're talking like 25, oh, oh, over 25 years later or nearly 25 years later. Um, it's like it's, um, uh, math was never my strong suit. It totally stopped me from becoming a, a scientist. <laughs> Not that I wanted to become one, but anyway, uh, so with that, uh, with that said, um, uh, for those who don't know, we do the display capture thing here. I do turn on and off a blur. The uh, the audio will you might hear some faint audio being picked up from my speakers via my microphone, uh, but that's uh, that's just simply because I of how I have it uh, set up here because I don't like using earbuds and stuff. But you'll be able to tell where I am in the episode, and I do turn the blur on and off. This is the way I have it set up like that uh, is mainly to get around, is to make this as a much as as transformative work as humanly possible, so that CBS, Paramount, Viacom, whatever the hell it's called these days, doesn't come after me because they are very very mean people, and I'm saying I'm and I'm saying that with experience. Uh, for those who remember my old YouTube channel from five years ago. Anyway, uh, let's uh, get down to it, folks. What is Darling? Oh, school pictures. Daria, uh, so Quinn wanting her pic, loving having her picture taken, it does not uh, surprise me. She burnt the school picture. It looks like a prison photo. I hate it, picture day. Which is true. I don't like smiling unless I have a reason. I, I I'm I'm a miserable looking motherfucker. Well, y'all y'all know this. Tommy Sherman, yeah, I was right on that point. The well, Becky Lynch is not coming. She had just left the WWE. Why is Jody giving a speech about a goalpost, even if it is to honor a former alumnus? Also, there's something about this episode that is totally weird. Daria's jack is the wrong color, and her hair is also wrong. It's like it's like brighter, and it's like her, her thing is totally washed out. And he runs headfirst into the goalpost. But yeah, the, it's been a while since I've actually commented on the on like an animation error or a coloring error in, in this case. The last last few times was uh, relates to Jody's hair. I mean, yeah, Daria's. It, it's just jarring whenever Daria is on screen, especially when you see her sitting next to Jane, who's, who, who's, whose color tone is totally correct. We can only hope. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, why is she writing a the a speech about the goal of goal post for a football player? Also, Jody's voice sounds totally weird. Now 
And Jordy's voice sounds very high pitched. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be awkward. Wow, dude, she's in high school. She's in high school, you jackass. That's good on you, Brittany. Yeah, Daria ain't having it. Yeah, he's definitely uh, the BMOC, or at least thinks he is. Like, why would he change it? It's like Sherman is being a complete jerk. Now, I'll say this. Kevin ain't that... Well, yeah, Kevin is scrawny without the football pads on. Yes, she did meet him and smacked the shit out of him. That glare from Daria. Why is the Hardcore Holly theme playing? Yeah, she told you to move. Tell, tell him, Daria. He's going to read. The, he, wait, he can read? No, he does not. Uh, his the rest of his very short life, he's going to be treated as a hero. Wishes do come true, at least in cartoon in the cartoon world, it does. Very reaction sharp from Daria and Jane. I do one thing I I love about do this rewatch and stuff is how short the episodes are and and how quick the pacing has to be. W wait, was it a, a, a freakish accident, or was it cheap materials being used to build a goalpost in the first place? Until you reach the goalpost. Why do I have a feeling Principal Lee had a very fond memories of Tommy Sherman? Kevin is having a moment. Why would everybody sing One Sweet Day? Resemblance to the guy we met. That's great. Is there 
Yeah, and again, Jane is avoiding Daria due to the circumstances. And here comes Kevin and, again, everybody coming up to her because she is the quote-unquote misery chick. What, what words of wisdom is she going to have? What type is that? Yeah, who did he remind you of? Yes. Yeah, you can only hope that they lose all their games. Yeah, and now Brittany's going to be coming around the corner because she was peering around the, the from from the side of the school. Yeah, talk to. Why can't you talk to Kevin? Now, there's nothing wrong with calling dead people what they were. I mean, Hitler was a jerk. Being all gloomy and depressed. Again, being labeled, being perceived one way. It's like, again, if you're wondering why I could relate to this episode, it's it's this. It's... She is as nice a person as she thinks. He is a very nice person. Yes, okay. And not feeling worse? Good. Oh no, it's Principal O'Neill. Uh, Principal O'Neill, Mr. O'Neill. Daria isn't as sensitive, at least to Tommy Sherman. Yeah, again, school administrator stuff labeling a student in the aftermath of a tragedy. Again, as I said, wonder why I can relate to this particular episode so much. It's like, geez, uh, again, I, I, again, I'm getting unfortunate flashbacks to to the spring of 1999. I'm I, I'm I'm getting way too many flashbacks here. Yeah. Again, Jane avoiding Daria because of the circumstances. It's nuts. What's on this week's episode of Six Sad World? And here comes Quinn. Daria's room is cool, man. 
You know, if there's one good thing about this episode is that we don't see Tommy Sherman hitting on Quinn. Who's like a year to, a year or two younger than Daria and Brittany. So at least there is that. Safe new goalposts. You know, that's an admirable goal for the fashion club. She did? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Daria is snapping here. Unfortunately, Jane's at home, but Trent is. <laughs> Again. It really? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's like uh, Trent and Tommy would be about the same age. Trent showed up to plenty of classes. It doesn't make him think. Trent, be, Trent being cool about all this. And Darius can go to confront Jane. Yeah, like, why are you avoiding her? Yeah, she is. Yeah, she'd like to talk to you. A huge difference, let me tell you. I was like... Yeah, it's like you speak. There's nothing wrong with speaking ill of the dead. They're upset because they're gonna die. That's understandable. Okay. But you know what I've been hearing? You know how I feel, Daria. You're gloomy. I knew I could talk to you, Daria. You're always miserable. Tragedy hits the school, and everyone takes a beating. The popular guy dies, and now I'm popular because I'm the misery chick. But I'm not. Again, Daria's rant here again is totally relatable. Jane, you don't smile. It was a pure circumstances. It's a coincidence. Wait, Jane is aspiring for middle management? I didn't think she had such lofty goals. Pizza? Trent didn't forget. <laughs> I have no idea what Lord Tennyson is talking about. I didn't have this class in high school.
Good song by Metallica. Sad but true. Uh, Tennyson was right then. Yeah, property laws ruin everything. Oh, great. Here. Wow, how shallow is she? <laughs> Five bucks. Oh. Of course her cat is named Fluffy. It's already working. Thanks. Like for ten bucks, you know, she changed her emotional state. Twenty. Yeah, like I remember that punch line. Like I was thinking it was five. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. So yeah, this episode. Pretty much exactly how I remembered it. Um, again, I, I am re I am really glad, even though it was creepy as all hell, seeing that Tommy shirt I mean hitting on Brittany. Um but at the same time Brittany recognized it and slapped him it was like so damn hard. That was actually really well animated. That scene was actually really well animated. Um, but everything else, the meat and potatoes of the episode, uh, one once you get into it after, you know. Uh, the goalpost falls on Tommy Sherman, and, and and I actually thought he was he ran into it and it fell. Uh, I was like I, I was confused. I confused the flashback with what actually happened that it fell over on top of it. Um, but uh, but but still, it was like I am really glad that we did not see him interacting with Quinn. Um, or even the uh, even the fashion club members in and of themselves. Um, I, I I could really could imagine that would have been like uh, that probably would have been uh, more off putting than it actually was. <laughs> than than with just uh, with uh, with Brittany, uh, we already know that we saw in prior episodes that Kevin without his shoulder pads and stuff, uh, especially in the uh, this year's model episode, that he is kind of like on the scrawny side without the pads on. Uh, so it's uh, that he actually has a smaller build than Mac. But then again, quarterbacks in general kind of are not as big in bulk, uh, uh, are not as big as like your wide receivers, your running backs, your, and certainly not your linebackers and or anybody on the, the defensive line. It's like they, they are a bit of a, a, a smaller build. I mean, just look at Tom Brady, for example. Uh, the entire thing with uh, Daria, again, but Daria being perceived one way, that she is the misery chick, that she is, thinks of all the doom and gloom and stuff, um, and that she is easily coping with it when everyone else isn't. Um, it's, I mean, it, again, I, I can totally relate to that because, again, it's like, People are always being labeled or they're being put to fit certain categories. And the fact that uh, that we saw Kevin approaching her, that we saw Brittany approaching her, then we saw that Mr. O'Neill approaching uh, Daria as well. So that she is being perceived that way, not just by the jocks or the cheerleaders, because because Brittany is smarter than, than, she, than she comes across, so it's really hard to fit her into a certain category and then but also the academic staff is like are you kidding me on this um 
I do like the conversation that Daria has with Jane when she goes to confront her, thanks to Trent, like, real uh, and I'm more on Trent in a bit there, but the co entire conversation is that Jane has, and it's like what Daria needed to hear, that, hey, people look at you because you think, as like, you don't smile because you're thinking that you are basically are a realist and stuff, but everybody else isn't, and they don't know what to do. It makes their brains hurt to not be able to be a, there's a certain way, such as Brittany not feeling at, that she is nice enough, or or uh, or Mr. O'Neill not being able to totally cope with uh, with tragedy or 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 uh, unfortunate events and and things of that nature. And then you have Jane straight up telling Daria that she was avoiding her because she doesn't want to think at all. Not just because they were the last one speaking to Tommy Sherman before the in before the goalpost fell on him. But uh, it's like it, it's it's almost as why that Daria and Jane are almost like a perfect uh, perfect balancing act, even though they have very similar personalities. But also Trent. Uh, is also the low key MVP because he realized Tr Trent as a munition, he's going to realize how people are uh, and, and, re and realize that Daria really needed to speak to Jane. It was like in the aftermath that Daria was kind of like needing to speak to her best friend. And so it was like instead of, it's one of those times it's like, yeah, Jane tells him. That not to, to tell everyone that she went out for a run and she assumes that Trent forgot and Daria tell, tells Jane that no, Trent didn't forget. It's like Trent Trent read the situation and made a judgment call. It's it's one of Trent's true shining moments as a character because he doesn't really get a lot of screen time uh, like he going forward, uh, especially in the, in the latter uh seasons if memory serves me right but uh him be able to read the situation perfectly um uh, really speaks a lot to his character and that you almost wish that he had more like i am trying to think is like does he have does he take that kind of like mentor ish role or like being in that position of where he can uh read a situation and, and make a judgment call that other people wouldn't who are in, in the uh, in the same episode so so th th there's that so again it's a it's a very it's again even to this day it's an episode i can very much relate to it's it's one of my favorite episodes of daria uh, because as i said at the very beginning i totally can relate to being labeled and perceived a certain way not just by other people my own age especially back in high school but also by the school um, school staff and, and and administrators so yeah uh so with that said uh that wraps up season one of daria um and also at the time of this recording here we hit 500 subscribers here on this pokey little youtube channel of mine so i want to thank you very much uh like comment to subscribe if you're so inclined um maybe we can get to a thousand subscribers and and so forth uh we will can be continuing our daria rewatching and and, and, uh, and reaction and discussing uh next week with with the start of season two and uh i need to make a new thumbnail um well <laughs> for season two uh, so with that said, tighten your friendship bracelets, stay safe, uh, and, and, and when something happens, folks, please try not to judge those who are different than you, as, like, not everyone can be the same under every circumstance. Trust me, I'm speaking from experience, and not just because of this episode. We'll see you next time. Bye.